given an assignment to present on uh, control on uh, CDPD and CCDD. Uh, there's an innovative diagnostic kit that's supposed to prepare or develop, but it's behind time a bit. You may not need to go and start Googling to find out what you're forgotten about CDPD. So, this is the outline of our one, the presentation plan, to run, we look at the introduction, clinical presentation, the diagnosis, how to prevent it, the control, treatment and then the way forward is where I'll give you a small inkling on how the new kit is going to be developed. Next. Now, we have defined CDPP. I think we all know in this hall what CDPP is and what causes it. Uh, it is a respiratory condition, that's where it usually attacks the lungs. And uh, the disease remains a major transpulmonary animal disease. I have highlighted that so that you can also question yourself if you don't know what a transpondary disease is. And I've given a few examples of the others. PPR, foot and mouth disease, and the highly pathogenic avian influenza. How does it appear in the, in the world, let's say, in the world? The disease is more common in Africa. It's been said that it's in about 26 countries, and especially the Sub-Saharan Africa. What is raising concern is that it has started in Kairi in the old or previous way it had been eliminated and it's spreading to new places. It is a serious threat to livestock production in Sub-Saharan Africa, countries, and it's a, a very big obstacle to development in the country.
And this is why a lot of people, they call it white meat. A lot of people are shifting from the red meat uh, to white meat. And uh, because of that, it is a small you know, cheap At most, like the average uh, small palate or a kidney is 1.2 kilo, uh, kilo. Especially if they are bread. Uh, the others can go probably in the country, they can go up to 3 kilo or something. But obviously, the bigger the chicken, the, the less uh, conducive uh, to value of big and the rather small portions. Next please. Uh, before handling, you, you have to come in. Uh, somebody yesterday mentioned that uh, in, uh, in a slaughterhouse, I think it's the, the chair. In the slot house, there is a lot of chickens which are lost, and a lot of segments, segments, through ascites, uh, through broken legs, uh, through the uh, stands, they never do properly. So it is important before you give your slot house and tomorrow, uh, you are a service provider, you must come to the floor, separate all the ones which are sick, separate the ones which are dead, and also uh, eat. Make sure that it advises you when to remove the feeding at least uh, eight hours. Eight hours before so there should not be feed. Otherwise that will increase uh, contamination. And obviously it will be goes with the animal goes with the with the plant with the with the food crop. That way it will be that. So it is important for you to make sure that the plants are free for uh also for that also represents the slaughter and the modern inspection. That means uh, all the symptoms you have to do, uh, you are not going to waste the seed, which is a death there, and that they continue until they are loaded to clean, to clean, to clean. The steps in grading, in grading, that means in terms of uh, grading, these are the ones which are going to be slaughtered. Obviously, the transportation to the, uh, to the plant is very important. Uh, you must carry them during the course uh, parts of the day. If especially early in the morning at 6 a.m. Uh, or 5, that is when they should be arriving uh, at the factory. Then they are loaded, they are weighed, uh, and then they are put in shackles. And they, then, of course, the cleanliness. This is why, you know, because when they are put in the, in the water for standing and also for storing, they, they don't introduce a lot of uh, a lot of contamination. Then of course they go through the, the process of refinery and uh, evisceration, then uh, slaughtering them or removing uh, parts uh, which are not <coughs> edible. Then of course once they have been, they have been cleaned or they have been evisceration, they are cleaned and then they are put through uh, chiller, skin chiller so that they are uniformly pulled by cold air, cold water. And then if you are taking them or they are not really immediately fresh, you put them in the you can uh, in a chiller, you can chill them in a water, cold water, or brass air and chili, which is a better option because that brass very quickly and then the chicken will be almost uh, you know chilled uh, without the water uh, beer. Next thing. So primary uh, processing would include the realization of chemical areas and parts, especially who are not going to be sold whole, will be ground. <coughs> then the flaking is you know, cutting into small slices, come up, you know, in small slices. Then freezing uh, and uh, packaging. Then of course the only thing is that uh, it goes to uh, sale. So the is they cannot use the recipe. Now, the issue of uh, plastic rice. <coughs> this plastic rice is, uh, is actually rice which they grow in the mountain. It doesn't need water, I said. They need water, yes, right. They doesn't need the water. They grow them in the mountain. Yes, right. They are, you know, crop which can grow up there. And uh, they, they, they need very creamy, something that if they so white, they wouldn't be eating. Some of you have seen the, 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 the owner, especially in the white, uh, white, very white, very white owner plant. Second, if you see that in the garden, you wouldn't believe it in the garden. Similarly, you can't but you don't have it here, and then you don't have it here. So it is an issue of 
how they are able to do it. Yeah? Thank you. support. This will be in terms of your diary that you paid or you paid for. Everything. And uh, daily is becoming multifaceted in terms of the daily goat and the daily animals that are cattle. So currently by 2016 KBS reports a population of 0 0.5 million goats. Daily goats. While cattle are about 4.5 million. These cattle are churning about 4.1 billion liters. And average by counties, if you do an average of milk cost by county, it comes to about 51 shillings. When you multiply that, assuming that all the milk is sold, it comes to about 183 billion Kenya shillings. And there is a lot of potential because a current study that we have done somewhere suggests that there is an average production of about 8 liters per car. If we are to scale this to 15 liters per car, what would you be talking about in terms of finances? Just some basics Let's to show you how a cow rises up, a normal cow, a normal cow on the line that we have on the other side. Then any time you want to put up a structure, you have to take care of the animal behavior. The reason as to why you put up that structure because with the structure you can get accidents and all that stuff. So the range of vision for cut, of cattle is about 300 to 330 to 360 degrees. With the only view that they have in the front, which is shown by the figure that you have towards the left, is about 25 to 30 directly ahead of the car. But the rest behind it and all that is about that coverage. So you need to take that into consideration as you do your structure. Then there's two types of room for an animal. The physical room, and then there is a social room. So if you approach an animal from the front, you need to take, you, you have approached that animal rightly. So that is the social space. If you approach an animal from either the back or the side, then the animal gets really wary on how you approach it. So you need to give this animal room for social space, it has to feed, it has to interact with others, heat detection has to happen, and this animal has to also lie down, get up, and do all this comfortably. So, there are types of dairy housing. This is common knowledge that you have come across. So there are the stall barns. So, in this case, each animal has its own space, and this animal is held within that space all the time. So it's easier to observe all these animals and in case you want to treat them in this kind of a setup, then you are able to treat them and also give them individualized attention. And uh, some of these structures are coming into the country. They have not been there, but many farms are coming into this. The people who belong to cartels are building such kind of structures and they are your clients. So counties are also getting into dairy production and some of them are building this kind of structure. So this is not far-fetched. The right, as dairy production moves to the next level, structures will be moving to the next level and everything will be scaling up. Then there are free stalls where you let the animal get a space to lie down, sleep, walk, leave that place and eat whenever it feels like. That is the next kind of stall that you have. So this, I am talking about it because I want to try and confine myself to zero grazing kind of units because that is where the structures matter most. So this is free. The animals are free to interact. Heat detection will be better. Everything in terms of management is social. So the animals interact within the system. 
So dynamic housing is becoming is significant because it affects production at the end of the day. So the overall health of an animal and its longevity. Longevity is the period that the animal will last within your heart in terms of production. So when that animal is there, housing also determines that. This is because people with population increase are transforming from the previously extensive systems to intensive systems and housing is becoming very important. So there is stall feeding with limited outdoor access and housing management in reality is a way to help you manipulate the environment. So you can set up a microclimate within your home state that is far away because if you go out there you find that the temperature is different from what you find in here so you can create a microclimate by building a good structure for the animals and then understanding the climate that you're going to create and how it will affect your production is very important so housing provides potential to again manipulate the environment in terms of temperature humidity and all that that relatively high initial investment cost comes in when you want to now put a good production uh, unit per head. So in the present time, people focus on cow comfort in terms of animal welfare, and this helps increase production and eliminate animal health problems. The main objective of putting up a dairy unit is always to check the temperature and sometimes humidity. So high temperature and high humidity is detrimental to milk production, and that is why you put up a structure. So good housing systems are those that are well designed to ease management and maintenance at all times. Orientation of these houses reduces direct entry of solar inside the cattle shed, which ultimately helps to keep the house cool. So alignment for the dairy unit should be in the east West axis because you want to reduce the amount of light that will be getting into the unit. Then the shed height should be at approximately 365 meters from the ground level and shed I wanted to tell you that Jesus is still there waiting for you as all other things are going on. I only want to respond to an issue about the disease control and evolution. And this one is a big challenge for us all. And it is only in two aspects. The problem lies only in two places. One, have we understood devolution? What functions have been devolved and what is, has to be carried out by the national government. That time has never been understood. Disease surveillance has to use command system, which has to be maintained and retained. If the director of veterinary services does not hold it, we will not go anywhere. It must be a command system. Two, we did not send the country.